Thanks, yeah. Thanks everybody for being here. We are um, going to basically um, present um, two different aspects, uh, both to, to, to deal with um, the, the kite foil, which is um, really, uh, you know, has, has a lot of momentum in, in the kiteboarding world and in, in the kite racing. Um, so Gonzalo is going to present um, the technical aspect of our new um, kite foil design. I will be talking a little bit more about um, the actual kite foil Gold Cup Tour, which is our high-end um, um, world championship tour um, that has started last year. Um, I'm on the committee for this tour, so I'm speaking on behalf of the tour, just giving you guys an idea what's what's happening with that. Um, uh, first, I would like to um, introduce um, Gonzalo, who's the, the head designer of our new uh, model. Um, we have put a team of designers together last, um, uh, towards the end, end um, of last year. Um, and um, as you can see there on the, on the slide, um, there's some pretty um, um, popular names um, in there that have been involved. So I think we, yeah, we, we had a lot of fun developing this and uh, we have, I have even more fun riding this. Um, it's still a prototype at the moment, but um, it's going pretty well and um, Gonzalo's gonna take you through um, um, a bit more um, um, about the design process yep. that we have been um, um, doing in the last um, 10 to 12 months. Okay, so uh, basically when Marvin approaches, uh, we were a bit scared because it's tricky to understand the dynamics of uh, kite foiling. It's not as simple as a, well, it's not simple, but a, as a, a, a big boat where you can sort of uh, predict what's going to happen or the, the sailing mode. Here, it's a bit more tricky and there's only one guy who knows it and it, that's the rider. <laughs> so it's, it's very difficult to get good feedback and, and that's where we started pretty much. Uh, so we started uh, putting some gyroscopes and GPS and, and GoPro cameras all around the board and kite <coughs> to understand the, the heel angles, pitch, uh, leeway, these kind of things. And then design this first model, design it for, for that mode. Uh, as we grow up, we'll try to uh, develop methods to predict those sailing modes. Um, so this, so this model is basically um, um, looking at VMG course racing, yeah. so upwind, downwind. Um, yeah. There is you know, other things like long distance speed that is getting popularity, but the, the, the course racing VMG is definitely at the moment the most popular and interesting, um, challenging yeah. thing to do. So basically D3 Applied Technologies, which is my, which is my company, we are pretty much an R&D department for, for any sort of project. We've been doing uh, lately foiling power boats, cats, uh, 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 racing power boats up to 120 knots. And we uh, feature a, a cluster for CFD and that's the kind of the tool that we use for, for uh, designing or the, the core tool. Uh, so once we gather all, all that feedback from Marvin and, and his mates, uh, all uh, these guys, the test riders, uh, we started with a, a parametric modeling, which was done by, by my friend Mark Menek. We worked together uh, for the Volvos and, and, and the American Star with Artemis, Sami Mokas as well, PC52. And uh, we developed, Mark developed a, a, a parametric model that would allow us to change pretty much any design feature instantly. So that would let us, uh, not only for this prototype, but for the upcoming models or, or versions, to develop them very quickly. And, and we're speaking about design, uh, uh, the, the, the time frame for this design was pretty much uh, two or three weeks, not, not more than that. Once we, need, we, we knew the, the 
all the, the data. Then it's an ongoing process and there, but you know, the core or the, the, the main shapes was something like that. Yeah, well we have, this is the fourth model now, so there has been, you know, some previous experience yeah. and design already that has been there, so we had some modeling that we were able to give yeah, well, let's say to these guys. It, it was like a three weeks, 100%, then it's, it's yeah. an ongoing process, we've worked on these. Yeah. Well, you need a base and model and then yeah. go from there, yeah. So first, we wanted to understand what was the, the cause we didn't know uh, much on the, on the uh, dynamic behavior of, of, of these things. Uh, by we, I mean D3 applied technologies. So we wanted to understand how the nodes are distributed and, and what's the sort of um, um, static and dynamic stability of the combination of forward and aft wing. And uh, so that's how we started with easy panel code methods and, and trying to understand the pitching behavior. Uh, from there, we designed two these sections specifically, specifically for the uh, flow regime for this uh, uh, model. Each wing has its own uh, section. And from there, well, we also did, we can say this reverse engineering of, of uh, our models or of other models. We wanted to make sure that we were uh, uh, good against the other. And then uh, we tested uh, uh, matrices of CFD points in, in for all the models in different uh, conditions of uh, heel, pitch, uh, height, uh, speeds, pretty much all the conditions that we knew we were going to face. And uh, from there, uh, well, you can carry on. That, that, this is the, the, the final design, the one you see here. We'll is, pass it around if you guys yeah. want to have a feel. Some sexy sexy. It's a, it's a prototype, it's out of the mold. It doesn't have the finish that it should yet, but uh, you know, we are working on it. And uh, of course, there's a tricky part here that we are still uh, uh, processing or, or, or working on it, which is the, the structural design. Uh, but we hope to have it ready. Well, Marvin is already racing with the prototypes, and, and we hope to have it in production as soon as possible. Uh, that foil has a fixed uh, rear, uh, yep. rear so wing. You can ba basically, that. if I just run you guys quickly, for those who don't know, through the, the, the fairly standard setup of the foil at the moment, you have a board. They're usually made out of carbon, light, um, a good stable platform, but also, you know, they, the, the tendency is now going to smaller or narrower, so you can basically lean more upwind without touching the water. However, this is um, already at the moment at the higher end of the spectrum, being 150 centimeters long and only um, 48 centimeters wide. Uh, most of the boards are about 55 wide in the center around where your front feet go and about 160 long. So we already have pushed it a little bit with this, but I'm sure there's gonna be a lot more with the board. Um, you got three straps on the board, one for your um, back foot and then one for your um, port, one for your starboard um, um, foot. Then if you turn the board around, you can see from the side um, the, the strut, the mast, which is generally at the moment between 95 centimeters and 100 um, on average um, centimeters long from the connection of the board to the fuselage. Um, and then there's you know a whole bunch of different dimensions and, and sizes in, in the wings and the setup um, um, of the board. There's different connections to the board, all fairly simple. We just use um, these track system, they're old windsurf mast tracks um, that we built into the board. Um, which allows us to basically move the position of the foil on the board up and down, back and forth, um, to find you know um, a perfect balance point, depending on your stance preference, but also your body weight. So if you have a look from the side, 
you can see where my back foot is. It's basically right behind the, um, the trailing edge of the strut. Um, if I'm a lighter rider, I would probably have it a little bit, have the strut a little bit further forward so I get more lift um, being lighter. If you're heavier, the other way around. Strong wind, light wind, there is different options. It just has to be fairly balanced. So like, you know, I'm standing now, that's a pretty good way to be on the board. If you got too much back foot pressure or front foot pressure, you probably tire out pretty quick. So I just quickly wanted to show you guys the, the, the standard, fairly standard setup that um, we are using on these um, foils at the moment. Um, so that basically concludes the, the technical and design aspect of um, um, this, this new foil and, and the kite foils in general. We just wanted to introduce basically um, you know, the, the kite foils to the foiling world which is happening at the moment and, and show our approach to, to the design of the, the new foil. Um, if you guys got any questions, I'd say we have them now and then keep going with the second part of our presentation. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah, so basically on the front, they prevent um, the foil from breaking surface. Um, also um, give it a little bit more stability downwind because the foil, you know, stays more in the line um, that you want. With straight foils, the foil would go sideways a lot more, um, especially with the wingtips on, on the back. It just gives you more directional um, control and stability. Um, we have got some straight wings as well. Um, you know, they, they do work, but um, they are a little bit harder to control. So why um, the wings on the, um, on, on the back are up and not down, it just works better. I don't know why, we haven't really found an explanation <laughs> no, for it. No, actually... We actually, have tried yeah. the other way around as well, yeah. but the best way I can probably, the best thing I can tell you about it, it helps downwind yeah. to, to keep directional yeah. stability. Sorry, I can't really answer you no, but, uh, actually, this question. The wings are designed so that, uh, the, the wing tips are designed so that they are unloaded in order to reduce the, 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 the vortex generation. So that's why uh, a wing with a, you know, for a beetle, you have a, a, quite a constraint here, just you cannot go with higher aspect ratio than you would surface. So you have to work with the tip design. This is a different model. Uh, you have to work with the tip design to unload it so that it doesn't suck, uh, suck air, which would uh, well, destroy your lift pretty much. And uh, I think the reason why the upward tips at the back are working is that uh, they are further apart from the tips of the, of the forward foil. But from a, we've, we've tested both actually. I think you can see them here. And there's one, yeah, you see the first one there? So this one had, Downward tips. It, it works great upwind, yeah. maybe even better than the wings up, but downwind it's terrible. We, we didn't, from a performance point of view, in CFD we didn't see any difference. So I think it's more on the dynamics.